In the last part of this notebook, I want to walk through how we interpret and use the probabilities that the logistic regression model generates. In a sense, how do we make a decision from the probability that we've computed? So we'll start first with the decision rule. So the decision rule is really that function that translates our probability of being benign or malignant into whether or not we're going to actually classify that particular tumor to be benign or malignant. A very natural decision rule would be to say, if our probability of being uh, of y being 1, given our x, is greater than 0.5, then we would uh, say that the y is 1, otherwise we'd say that it is 0. This is the standard decision threshold one might use, and if you've appropriately trained your model, you haven't used a substantial amount of regularization, and your data is well balanced, this should maximize the accuracy of your predictions. However, this doesn't need to be the only decision rule, uh, and we can actually generalize this idea by introducing a threshold tau and saying if our probability of being in class 1 given our x is greater than tau, then we predict we're in class 1, otherwise 0. And we can choose the value of tau to either maximize accuracy or other goals like precision and recall, which I'll talk about in a moment. So let's start with accuracy. So again, if everything is well balanced, then tau of 0.5 should generally maximize accuracy. But we can actually look at our, at our data set and see how it performs. So actually, let's first consider 0.5. Um, and so uh, one thing to note is that the 0.5 threshold uh, is actually the threshold that scikit-learn is going to use internally when you say predict. So remember, if I say logistic regression model predict and I pass in an x, it doesn't return a probability, but instead a, a 0 or a 1, predicting the value of y. Uh, we can in, instead actually take the predicted probabilities here. Uh, so we take the, the uh, LR model dot predict prob A is going to return the probabilities. And we'll take the probability of it being in class 1, so y equals 1. Uh, and then what we will do is if that's greater than 0 0.5, then we're going to predict 1. Otherwise, we'll predict 0. Uh, and so we can see that that actually matches the predictions made by scikit-learn. Now, as I said, we can generalize this idea. And so let's define a function here that takes a model, an x, the data, and a threshold that we want to predict at. Um, and so this could be 0.5 or it could be any other threshold between 0 and 1. Then we can define an accuracy function. It takes a threshold, an x and a y, and it's going to use the LR model that we defined a moment ago and compute the accuracy, which will be the fraction of examples that the model gets correct uh, for that threshold. So again, threshold uh, the threshold to predict function is going to take the model and the x and map this uh, given a threshold to 0 and 1 for each uh, each tumor, and then we'll see how close that matches our, our training data, our y. And now I can consider a range of different thresholds between uh, 0 and 1. I'll try 100 different thresholds and compute the accuracy at each of those thresholds. And I can plot this. And so this is a, a uh, accuracy curve for different thresholds. Now, if we set the, accurate, the threshold to be something uh, really small, then we're essentially going to say that we're, everything can, uh, uh, you know, if there's any chance that a, a tumor is malignant, then we're going to say that it's malignant, um, and which means it will have very low accuracy because we'll say too many things are malignant. Um, and if we set the threshold to be too high, then all of a sudden we're saying that in order to be a malignant tumor, you have to have very high probability under a model of being malignant. And so again, we're going to miss a lot of the, the malignant tumors. And so the, the best threshold is somewhere in the middle, um, and it's, it's almost 0.5, it's actually 0.57. We did have additional regularization in the, the logistic regression model. We could have tuned that using the logistic regression CV function. Uh, you should look at that if you're actually using logistic regression here, we just stuck with the, the standard values. So 0.57 uh, gives us a threshold, and then we could look at the accuracy at that point. Um, if you were going to tune your, your threshold, you should really use cross-validation to do that. So I'll walk through how to do that here. So as before, we're going to use the, the built-in uh, scoring, the cross-validation scoring function in scikit-learn, and that's going to need a, a score function. It's going to, uh, it, well, <laughs> it's a little bit tricky here. So we're going to want a score function that takes a model uh, and an x and a, and a y, and it's going to return um, for a given metric uh, the, the quality of that model. Uh, here, what we're going to do that's a little bit funny is we're going to take in a metric as an argument to our, our score function, um, and we're going to take in a, uh, a threshold that we want to predict at. So we'll use our threshold at predict function. So this right here is going to return a number, um, and uh, we'll, we'll pass in the, mac the accuracy score metric, 
uh, but we could change our metric if we had different goals in mind. So we'll cross-validate this for uh, different thresholds. All right, so we'll define our score function. I'll walk this once more. So right here, uh, we're going to consider a range of different thresholds. And for each threshold, we're going to do cross-validation, five-fold cross-validation to measure the accuracy. Uh, I'll use my, my helper function here, make score, which is going to construct a score function. See, this returns a function. Uh, and I'm going to use the uh, built-in scikit-learn accuracies score. And this just takes the, the accuracy metric uh, takes a, a y and a predicted y, uh, so this would be a 0, 1 value, and computes accuracy. And this is going to be run for different versions of our model and different x and y uh, inputs. So that's our score function. All right, so we can take this, uh, run uh, cross-validation, takes a little bit longer, and then we can plot the cross-validated accuracy uh, at each point. So for different thresholds, and we see that it's uh, actually the same value. In practice, you really should use cross-validation when tuning these thresholds. Uh, here, it turned out to be the same, but if our model's a bit more complicated, it's possible we might start to overfit, and this threshold uh, might have a different value when using cross-validation. Another way to look at the accuracy of our model is through the use of a confusion matrix. The confusion matrix lets us understand the kinds of errors that we're making. It breaks down the kinds of errors between uh, false positives and false negatives, which depending on our setting, we might choose to have a different balance of false positives or false negatives. And that's something we can control by the, the selection of our threshold tau. So let me walk through what that means. Uh, so scikit-learn has a built-in function to construct the confusion matrix. Uh, so here we pass in our, our prediction um, so the confusion matrix is determined by our 0, 1 predictions. So we're going to make a, a default prediction at tau of 0 0.5. Uh, so we'll make a prediction for each of our x's uh, and compare that with the y's, and we get the following confusion matrix. Uh, to illustrate this, I have written actually a fair bit of code here to draw the confusion matrix and then label it with the appropriate uh, true negative, false positive, false negative, and true positive cells. So let, let me build this out. Um, so, so this is the confusion matrix. And what it's really doing is it's allowing us to see the uh, predicted and actual values of our y's and see where we make mistakes. So when we both predict and the actual value is false, so when y equals 0 and we predict that y equals 0, that is an example of a true negative. So we were true in the statement that the, the y is, is negative or 0. The positive and negative terminology comes from a test. So if you test positive, uh, that would be y equals 1. If you, you know, test negative, you, you don't have the, the, the disease. In this case, you're not uh, malignant. Then that would be a negative result. It's a little bit confusing since we're talking about zeros and ones and, and positive and negatives, but, but you know, bear with me. So a true negative is the uh, number of times that we predicted that the uh, y was, was, was negative, was 0 and the, the y was in fact zero. Um, a true positive is another good outcome, so the diagonal are the good outcomes. So a true positive is, is when uh, we predict that the, the tumor is malignant and it is in fact malignant. Now the false positive and the false negatives, these are our mistakes. So a false positive is when we predict that the uh, tumor is malignant, so when we predict y equals one, but the actual value is in fact uh, not malignant. Now, in the setting of, of diagnosing tumors, we might actually be okay with a slightly higher false positive rate, especially if that would mean that subsequent analysis would be done. In contrast, the false negative is when we say that the tumor is benign when it is in fact not, when it's in fact malignant, when the, the actual outcome is true. This is something we might actually not want to have. If we were using a model to screen tumors for further analysis, if we were to falsely conclude that a tumor is benign when it is in fact malignant, that would mean that no subsequent follow-up study is done uh, and that that patient may not actually receive treatment. So if we're going to have an error, we might prefer to have a higher false positive rate than a false negative rate. And indeed, in many medical settings, we actually prefer to err on the side of, of classifying a, a outcome as positive, as having the disease, than on the side of it being negative and therefore missing the disease. So when designing a classifier, this is something we might need to balance. And the way we can 
deal with this balance between false positives and false negatives. This is something called the precision uh, recall trade-off, which I'll show in a moment. All right, so to recap, the confusion matrix allows us to see the breakdown of true negatives uh, and true positives, the, the, the good outcomes, and the false negatives and the false positives, the bad outcome. And then this is done for a given threshold. So as we change the threshold, we can see this balance move. In the next video, we'll walk through the precision recall trade-off, how to compute it, and then how to use it to make a decision about what threshold to set.